This is great. And, and thank you guys for coming in. Thank you, Mario on the Simulia Finance team for hosting. Thank you, Zucky, for getting us fired up. George, Evan from Miston Labs. It's a pleasure to have you here with Jack. Um, why don't I um, let Zucky introduce us uh, because uh, he knows everybody here really well. And let's get off to talking about Miston Labs. Uh, that we have the Miston Labs team with us. And we're gonna be talking about what we're gonna be doing for Sommelier and the Cosmos. So if you are here, there is Alpha. Um, even Jack's gonna throw down some cool stuff on ABCI. But this Alpha is for nerds. This is gonna be geeky Alpha. This is gonna be inside baseball Cosmos style. Um, we're gonna be talking about deep, 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 deep mempool and consensus layer hotness. Um, so join us. This will be a great Mist and Labs and Sommelier uh, AMA as well as Twitter Spaces. So I'll let Zucky get started and uh, with introductions. Shall we begin? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you know the um, let's 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 talk about all of our intersections with the with the with the with the, the magical world of Cosmos and uh, uh, the uh, once you've sort of entered into the gravitational pull of Cosmos, you can never escape. Uh, so uh, I'm Zucky. Uh, I've been working at Cosmos for about seven years. Um, and, you know, I've been very interested in sort of next generation consensus protocols, fast blockchains, um, and all these things that make, uh, make these things possible. And, you know, everyone else on this call has done really important work in this same area. Um, I have, I've, I've definitely known all the people on this call for, for a couple of years, but Miston Labs has been just getting, uh, a lot of hype because it is without a doubt one of the most exciting teams to emerge bringing, uh, bringing performance to public blockchains. Um, and so Evan is the founder and CEO of Miston Labs. And Evan, you want to talk a little bit about uh, what brings you to the, the world of building high performance public blockchains? Uh, hey, uh, I'm Evan. Uh, great to be here this morning. Uh, you know, I see many familiar faces. Um, so it's great. It's great to see people's interest in this space. So, uh, you know, George and I were with uh, Facebook's uh, Novi division for two and a half years, George, right? For me, it was three years. Um, yeah, two and a half also, years. Yeah, yeah, it was an awesome experience, right? We did a lot of really event work. Um, you know, it just got to the point where it's just like, for me, at least, you know, the, the you know, the pull, the, 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 the sort of the pull of being an entrepreneur, you know, jumping into this crazy world, you know, head on, uh, just taking our learnings, our experience and apply it to the broader field is just too hard to exist. And, and myself and my co-founders will feel that way together, which is kind of, a, you know, talking about a month of self and just decide, hey, this is something we want to do. Um, we learned a lot, you know, you know, and in, in this field, you know, every bit of performance is critical. Uh, and, you know, so, so we, we've been pushing on that for, for a number of years. Uh, we, we feel like we have a lot of great tech to share. So that's why we're here. Wait, wait, hold on a second. You guys lasted two years at Facebook? Like, how, I mean, that's, is that, a, is, that a, is that a short time or is that long? No, no, I've been at Facebook for six years and before that, 10 years at Apple, right? Um, and so, so there is a lot of goods in these tech, uh, big tech companies, and we provide a great, you know, kind of working environment. Uh, you know, these are great companies, great people, first of all, awesome that's people. Awesome. And yeah, and and that's that's one thing, you know, that, that that we cannot, you know, we have to to, to you know talk about the the quality of the folks that work on these the technologies that you can, you know, We just feel like you know, so so tech com you know, big companies have to be concerned about their product and, you know, and, and what, what the product's needs are. For us, you know, we want to move a little bit faster. Uh, so that's why we, we, we decided to strike out the ball and, and, and do a strike. Yeah. But, and you guys have uh, acquired, uh, learned a lot of amazing things while um, in the Facebook nest. I mean, uh, I mean if I'm correct, uh, I mean, your team is responsible for the successful technology wins of Diem. Um, you know, we'd love to hear maybe a little bit about some of those wins, um, you know, um, as it applies to the open source software that, uh, you know, DM um, was able to bring to the blockchain space. Any particular wins on 
you know, in terms of yeah. performance, if you guys can share? Yeah. Well, not, not just performance, right? So, so one of the things that we, we have talked a lot about is our move smart contract platform, uh, a language designed to be safe, a language designed with, you know, modeling the resource correctly, you know, better tooling, and, and more importantly, like eliminate this uh, manual step of kind of many other team. Uh, so there's, we will talk about move another time that, that that's a topic by us, itself. Uh, on the performance front, uh, you know, so we, we had the privilege of working with some of the top uh, kind of system designers in the world and protocol designers. So uh, the basis of the DMB uh, consensus uh, has stuff uh, by Dahlia, who who is the CTO of uh, DM uh, Association, also, you know, uh, work at Facebook. Um, so we, we're really proud of the work we, we did, you know, on top of, you know, hot stuff. And I, I, I know a number of, uh, you know, blockchain startups using that protocol. Um, we're just pursuing sort of trying to push what the limitations are, right? So uh, I'll say a year or so ago, we started looking into performance. Uh, and and I mean, actually, even before that, we, we did work like fast pay and all that. These are like beyond Visa scalability uh, payment system. Uh, then we start pushing on the core performance of the of the blockchain. Start looking at every aspect of the blockchain, right? So we look at the system holistically from the the way I look at it. You know, layman turn. You know, this is my my own terminology, not anybody else. We start looking at sort of the the first part of the blockchain, the front end, if you would, the main pool, and how it interact with consensus. And after we look at consensus performance, we look at um, execution. Uh, we have uh, kind of, we did a lot of work on parallel execution um, in, in ways that's quite different from what uh, everybody else is doing. Uh, we look at the data structure, we look at signature aggregation. So every aspect of the blockchain performance, we, we've been looking at them uh, in, in a lot of detail. The work is not done, uh, but we feel like we have designed to to one day kind of build the kind of blockchain that that's going to have speed up, you know, have performance characteristics um, that, that's going to be significantly higher than what's possible today. I, if, if I could jump in there and, you know, talk a little bit about that as a thread, um, performance versus what is, we have today. Um, you know, when you see some of the, you know, let's pick a particular section, let's say, you know, um, the meme of transactions per second, you know, we all, we've, it's ever since, you know, um, you know, Bitcoin gave us seven, you know, wonderful, um, you know, transactions per second. Um, the race has been on to, you know, take this meme, build on it, expand on it. What's the missed in view of, you know, this metric and what's currently in market and, and what missed in labs will be delivering in, you know, connection with Sumilia and, and the greater Cosmos ecosystem? Yeah, I can, I can take it from here if you want, Evan. Yeah, go for it, George. Yeah, oh, so I'm, I'm George. I'm the, the chief scientist of Mistin. And to some extent, this, this transactions per second obsession has, has been the, the thing I've been waking up every morning and going to sleep every night uh, to, uh, for the last few years. So th this, this transactions per second is a very complex story. It has a very complex story, right? Uh, a, a blockchain, to be useful, has to do a lot of things. It has to share transactions amongst all the validators, uh, make sure that they all have a consistent view. So that's the, the consensus. And then it has to actually execute them and has to uh, distribute the results uh, and, and interact with its ecosystem. So to some extent, taking a number like that magical seven transactions per second or the magical 14 for Ethereum and pushing it up and up and up is going to require a concerted effort on, on all fronts, like all parts of the technology stack uh, of, of a chain will have to contribute to that. Now, what we're starting with, and to some extent what, what our collaboration with, with Sommelier is going to be based on, is, is as Evan said, starting at, at the kind of front parts, right? I mean, a blockchain needs to distribute transactions across all these validators, or the honest validators, at least extremely efficiently. Uh, and then that's the mempool traditionally. That's how we think of a mempool. Uh, although today's mempools are very simple, they just you know gossip transactions around. And and then all validators need to have a, 
a kind of like consistent view of the sequence of transactions, right? And and this is before you know they can be executed by by the rest of the, the kind of Cosmos execution logic. Um, so these are the two components that that we looked at in quite a bit of detail in the last let's say uh, twelve months, and and these are. Our thoughts on that led to technologies that we call Narwhal for a, a new kind of logic for a mempool, if you want, and Tusk, which is uh, a very custom built consensus system uh, on that. Um, and our our current experiments, and you know, these are of course, you know, best case, just sequencing transactions, no execution on AWS. I mean wide area network AWS, not single data center AWS, but still it's it's a good network, it's reliable machines uh, and, and all of that, is that we can push tens of thousands of transactions per second to a hundred of thousand, a hundred or 150,000 maybe transactions a second on a single machine. So, so that's what we're looking at right now. This is a big machine, but still. Um, but what, what is quite interesting about the way we approach this is that the, the architectural um, design that we have uh, for, for the mempool in particular allows us to throw more resources per validator. So instead of a validator being a single machine, actually using two or three or four machines, and then be able to scale up the, the, the data dissemination, which automatically kind of scales up the throughput. So if the ecosystems out there at some point uh, incentivize validators to just throw more resources at the problem of data dissemination. The, the combination of this narwhal mempool with uh, either a traditional consensus system like Hot Stuff or, or Tendermint uh, or uh, the Tusk consensus system that we designed should actually allow you to scale up that, that TPS when it comes to sequencing transactions. That, does, that, does that provide you a picture a little bit of where we're coming from? It does. And, and I, you know, follow up question I have is you said something interesting. You said, you know, hot stuff versus Tendiment versus Tusk. So should we see um, them as alternative uh, consistent systems? And, you know, what are the, you know, are there key differences that we should consider, say, between Tendiment and Tusk um, that those from the cosmos listening would, would want to, you know, sort of understand as, as, as the difference or the, the defining line between the two? Yeah, that's that's a subtle question, right? And um, so, so here is a little bit more color on that, right? What what we uh, observed is uh, that uh, you know a lot of the cores out there trying to do consensus, kind of conflate the two properties, the two kind of services, if you want, that a consensus system should provide. The first one is you have to disseminate all transactions to all validators. I mean, all validators at the end of the day will have to, to have all transactions. So that's the first function. That's like a, the data dissemination function. And the second function is that all honest validators have to agree on the sequence of transactions. That's the kind of consensus part. And a lot of the consensus scores out there, including uh, Bitcoin and all of that, just conflate the two. They're like, okay, you know, some miner or some leader will make a block of transactions and will disseminate it. And as part of that or some additional messages, um, you know, consensus will, will emerge as well. And, and what we observed was that the performance of consensus systems that are kind of monolithic like that really is bottlenecked not by the actual consensus protocol per se that you know that that allows you to make a decision about what is the same view that everybody should should agree on but rather by the data dissemination layer so what we did is in in narwhal the mempool what we do is we totally separate out everything to do with the data dissemination out of the consensus protocol. So now all validators can just run uh, a basically a, an infrastructure that just shares data, shares data, shares transactions, shares like a causal, uh, you know, graph of transactions. And, and they can do that in, you know, using all the resources they can, they can muster, right? I mean, there is no limitation if you want on how much data you can share. Like, you know, the more machines and the more networking you throw at that, you know, the more you can share among validators. And then once you basically have shared all that data and you may now have potentially many different sequences of transactions and many different views on what should be actually executed, the only thing you need is to just share a tiny little amount of data 
through the consensus protocol that basically is just a pointer into that mass of data that says, hey, we are going to all agree that this is the canonical sequence out of all the possible sequences. And now that small amount of data can be agreed on using the consensus protocol. So now what, what that means is that the, the load on the consensus protocol, be it Bitcoin, you know, proof of work uh, or, or um, Tendermint or hot stuff or anything else we can think of, right? Is, is much lessened. Like instead of relying on the consensus protocol to actually share this mass of data, the consensus protocol just has to share the minimum amount of data for all the validators to just disambiguate which out of potentially many sequences is the one that everybody has to follow. So now what happens is that the actual throughput of what we, we used to call monolithically consensus, the, the throughput, the transactions per second just depends on the mempool, but the latency right, depends on the consensus protocol, if you want, right, because different consensus protocols will, will basically take a different number of round trips, etc., amongst validators to, to agree. So, so the way to think, if you want, about, about these systems is that Narwhal as a mempool takes care of the throughput, and then any kind of consensus system can be used in order to just basically so, get the let's, agreement, let's, yeah. let's uh, and the latency of that agreement will depend on this consensus protocol. Now, other things are a bit subtle, right? I mean, you know, traditional PBFT and Tendermint work uh, under what is known as the kind of partially synchronous network model, which means that you assume that messages delays will, will, will be bounded. Tusk, for example, which we designed to, to work well with uh, Narwhal, works in the totally asynchronous model where, you know, you just flip some random coins and don't actually need bounds on message delivery. These are more subtle issues. Uh, at the end of the day, I think the, the main kind of thing for, for, for people listening to this to take out is that if you separate dissemination in a, in a mempool that can really scale up as much as you want, you can pretty much use any consensus protocol on the other side. To, to actually get the agreement on which of all the potential sequences to get, and you still will get great throughput. And uh, which one exactly you pick is, you know, not actually as important as people may have thought in the past. That is awesome. So, go start, what, go ahead. Can I just jump in here about why this is so exciting for Cosmos? Um, because, you know, people may not know this, but, you know, essentially the Tendermint transaction dissemination algorithm um, uh, work has gotten almost no attention since probably about 2015. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, 2015, 2016, it was, uh, it was part of the system that, you know, uh, was implemented. It seemed good enough uh, for the time and it's been good enough for a while. But one of the reasons why, you know, as a sort of long-term Tendermint contributor, I'm so excited um, to work with the Meissner Labs team is this is like one of our opportunities to really modernize uh, that entire subsystem uh, and bring the modernization of that subsystem to the entire cosmos. Um, and I think as George has very eloquently explained, like this is like one of the major, uh, uh, one of the major bottlenecks that you can improve without having to, you know, and make a lot of progress uh, and get a lot of progress out of it. Uh, without having to necessarily like swap out the consensus engine. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, different consensus protocols on top of like a, a normal mempool, of course, will have subtly different properties, right? I mean, if you just use pure of, you know, proof of work, it will have different properties than if you use a kind of more, uh, you know, committee based uh, consensus algorithm, more asynchronous or asynchronous algorithm. But I think that in the past, because we conflated, uh, you know, these two different functions, and to be fair, the, the, the function that is difficult to get right is the consensus. Like, this was scientifically a difficult thing that basically, I think it's a huge achievement of the, the, the computer science, you know, academia, engineering community, the blockchain engineering community, that finally we actually kind of can implement these things correctly. And that was really hard. Everybody was focusing on that, as Aki said, no one paid any attention to the, to the front end, the dissemination. And it turns out that when it comes to actually performance rather than correctness, uh, a lot of wins are, are there rather than uh, in, the, in the later harder stages. So, so this leads me to ask a quick question and, and thank you, George and Zaki. So now I'm gonna ping Zaki. Zaki, okay, so 
So given what we, we, the opportunity we have here, what does this mean for the greater Cosmos ecosystem if, if all Cosmos chains can take advantage of essentially this improvement in, 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 in mempool performance um, and of course, flexibility in, in, and, 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 and this approach, opportunity to, to use that with Tendermint um, or, or with Tusk? I mean, do you have a view of what you could see the vision of the Cosmos ecosystem look like with all Cosmos chains implementing these changes? So what I think one of the things that is sort of the, like, again, like a real strength of Cosmos is that, you know, not every blockchain in Cosmos has to be the same. Um, so, you know, some, some blockchains that are on the IBC network may choose to be like, hey, we want everybody to be able to validate on Raspberry Pis. Um, but there are going to be applications that want to host uh, uh, like global scale financial systems. Um, uh, Sommelier is one of them. I'd say Terra, the Cosmos Hub have, have similar ambitions. Um, and, you know, in that environment, what you want to do is you want data center class machines, you know, running at, at sort of peak performance. Um, and so far we've seen, you know, because of these pieces of the Cosmos stack that have not, you know, that were because we focus so much on getting consensus right and then getting IBC right. Um, we, we haven't paid attention, put as much resources into things like block dissemination. Um, you know, the upper limits of scalability when, you know, the validator system set is running, you know, a 10 or, you know, 10 or $100 billion network, the validators can afford to invest quite a bit in hardware. And you can have like just, you know, sort of, you know, you can push the upper limits of, of throughput and vertical scaling of any Cosmos network uh, to sort of new heights. That is awesome. We want to go to these heights. Uh, George, Zucky, this is awesome. Evan, I'm coming back to you. Um, I know we're five minutes out before we have to wrap up. We've just, I mean, we've just barely scratched the surface here. Could you tell us a little bit more about the Miston team? Who else is on the team? Uh, well, okay, first of all, are you allowed to tell us who else no, is on yeah, the team? Yeah, we're, we're and, we're not a stealth. Uh, but yeah. November, <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but okay. what, what we'll say is we're super excited. Uh, there's a group of us, uh, scientists and engineers, uh, that, that we love working together. And basically, we, we, you know, we had this idea together, and we, we're so excited to develop it into a company. Uh, you know, can't wait to share more what we're going to be doing. Excellent, excellent. Um, so I guess maybe now that we have five minutes up, if there's any folks in the audience that have questions um, of, uh, this Twitter space uh, that is listening in um, would love to see a hand. You want to raise a hand, hit me up. Let's see some stuff um, if you want to chat. But also what I wanted to do was um, maybe ping Jack. Jack, you here? Is the rock star Jack here? I think Jack's here. Yes, um, I am. And I, I wanted, I, you know, programmability. So one of the things I wanted to talk about and make sure we, we covered was a little bit about, you know, um, you know, some of the functionality opportunities for upgrading Cosmos, um, uh, you know, code base that we talked about, um, mainly on the um, the ABCI. And um, if I could use a bit of in, inside baseball terms here, are you okay to share a little bit about your thoughts and you know what you know we would like to see from or the Miston Labs opportunity would provide for us with sort of improving the ABCI and 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 what that would mean yeah, for, for programmability sure. in the Cosmos. I mean, this is also some work that, that the Tinderbit core team has been doing for quite a while. And, you know, the, the Mist and Labs work will, will sort of uh, intersect with that in some interesting ways. Um, and basically what this is, is right now, a Tinderbit application only has a couple of hooks into the consensus process. And that's things like begin block, in block, and deliver TX. And that's basically the entire surface area. Oh, check TX as well. The entire surface area of the API. Um, enabling applications to instrument the various phases of the consensus process um, opens up the possibility of doing things like the gravity bridge in a much more um, sort of consensus native way. Um, so, you know, this the work that the Miston team is, is going to be doing to, to upgrade performance in Tendermint will touch a number of areas of the code. And we hope that we can uh, find some places to also increase programmability um, along the way as well. And if I may add uh, one more thing about the, the programmability aspect of, of our work. Um, as, as I mentioned, the, you know, pushing the, the sequencing of transactions uh, 
rate up does not actually solve the full problem. Eventually, you will have to execute all these transactions, right? And uh, uh, most uh, current, let's say, smart contracts would not be able to do that at uh, 100,000 transactions per second or a million transactions per second. So, so there has to be a, a more kind of global rethinking about what it means to actually execute uh, once basically you, you can sequence at that, at that rate, which I think is going to be a very exciting collaboration we can have to, to, to think about these things. Evan, that's, that's, Absolutely. that's really well said. And I think that parallel execution, which is sort of what you're hinting at, I think is a really interesting uh, research area moving forward and looking forward to working with your team on that. Awesome. All right. Uh, well, I think, um, you know, Evan, back to you. Um, when we think about uh, uh, Mistin, you know, have new, you know, new things launching, um, a big impact. Um, I'm just going to, you know, get up and ask, is, is Mistin Lab going to launch a Cosmos chain as well? Uh, that's a good question. We currently can <laughs> about Cosmos chain now. Uh, we, we are planning to uh, launch uh, a network uh, in, in 2022. Uh, it's not a, currently it's not a Cosmos chain, based chain, uh, but it's going to be something exciting in, uh, you know, Stay tuned. Uh, what we're hoping to do is to fill the, fill the gap in the ecosystem. We want to build uh, infrastructure, allow you know, sort of bringing crypto to the you know to the mass market, to the consumer market. So stay tuned on that. Zaki, what do you think about that answer? I, I'm, I'm thinking Miss Lin should launch a Cosmos chain. Your your view? <laughs> <laughs> I think that if you're launching a layer one blockchain, um, you should build it to be IBC compatible. That, that would be my Oh, that my is view. nice. Uh, it, is, it is by far the most permissionless way to onboard assets. Uh, so, you know, I don't really care if any people, people run Tendermint. I don't really care if people uh, uh, use the Cosmos SDK, but like I, I do think that IBC is the best is the best environment for enabling new layer ones to come to the market. That's that's awesome, and I absolutely agree uh, as well. All right, we are at our 9 a.m. time here um, on the West Coast Pacific. I want to say thank you very much to George, uh, Chief Scientist, and Evan, um, founder and team lead at Mistin Labs. Uh, we are super excited uh, to have you work with us to bring a lot of the performance enhancements that you guys delivered at Deem uh, to Sommelier, uh, as well as to the greater Cosmos ecosystem. Um, we are just, just really eager to get working. We know that everybody will want to work with yeah. you. Um, so we're, yeah, we're glad that you guys picked us first. Um, <laughs> and um, again, congratulations to you and the team. Uh, Zucky, Jack, thanks for having us and, and for sharing with us a vision of how Mistin Labs will have a massive impact on Sommelier's Cosmos uh, and programmability. Uh, for public blockchains. And yeah, uh, let's make it happen. And uh, we look forward to sharing more news as we continue. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Looking forward to all the work. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Okay. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.